Today, we are going to challenge ourselves to design and 3D print LEGO. We have given ourselves three challenges to complete. First, to design and print accessories for our LEGO figures. Second, to print LEGO figures themselves. And third, to recreate the build of a LEGO set. Let the challenge begin. 3D printers work by melting down a material and layering it to create an object. You can print with plastic, wood, and rubber-like materials. People have even created 3D printers to print food and buildings. We have been interested in 3D printing for a long time and decided this video was the perfect opportunity to get one. I smell profit! <laughs> we decided to start with the minifigure accessories because they are the simplest and will allow us to gain experience using this printer. We printed a large variety of designs from a website called Thingiverse. This website allows you to post designs for others to use. You can print bizarre things from a clone helmet to a flip-flop statue or a Model T Ford. Because of the popularity of this website, the printing options are almost endless. Also, you may notice the scratches on our printer bed. We accidentally made them by setting the nozzle Z-axis position too close to the bed when it was printing. However, everything works well. First, we printed multiple cameras, visors, and macro binoculars for our LEGO clones, which all turned out surprisingly well. A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. However, they are more rough than the LEGO versions because of the layering of the material, which creates a bumpy surface on the sides of the objects. This is one flaw of 3D printing. Each piece will have bumpy sides where the plastic is layered. We also printed some LEGO guns of the same design as the official LEGO ones, and some custom ones for LEGO figures comparable to the ones we got from Jonak Toys. Finally, we printed a helmet for Mando, which initially didn't fit his LEGO figure. Oh no! But by carving the interior, we achieved the correct shape and got it to fit. The 3D printer has the hardest time printing curved surfaces, but it did a good job with this helmet. We decided to design one minifigure accessory and chose Grogu's pod. Hello, what have we here? To do this, we used Tinkercad, which is a simplified version of CAD. We started with a paraboloid, which is basically a bowl to make the pram. We then duplicated this section and compressed it to make the pram's covering. Next, we added cylinders between the two bowl shapes. These are the hinges of the pram. Then, we added a rectangular prism for the buttons up front, a stud for Brogu to sit on, and a stud on the bottom of the pram to connect it to a base plate. Our first design didn't fit LEGO Grogu properly and its covering broke, so we made two improved designs fixing these issues to get our finalized pod. Designing with Tinkercad was a fun experience which we recommend to anyone who wants to start designing 3D objects. You can even use it to convert models to LEGO. The pram file is linked in the description below. Impressive. <laughs> Most impressive. The 3D printer we are using is the Ender 5 S1, which was sent to us by Creality for use in this video. This printer comes with all the tools needed to set it up and maintain it. An SD card and USB converter were also included. It was easy to set up because of the simple instructions. Once it was assembled, we did our first test print, a Benji boat, then dialed in the settings using this website to fix any problems, and it was ready to go. The printer has a touch screen, an auto-leveling bed, an SD card port to input designs for printing, a solid metal structure, a filament holder, a removable print surface, and a heat-up bed to prevent prints from warping. Creality also sent us their Sonic Pad, which has direct USB ports, a larger screen, and is supposed to help the printer print twice as fast. After many attempted prints using the Sonic Pad, we decided to stop using it because it was more finicky than the regular touchscreen and the quality didn't seem to increase. We found it to be unnecessary for this printer. If you're interested, all the products we used for 3D printing in this video are linked in the description below. Next, we tried to print some LEGO minifigures. We printed three different designs from Thingiverse. First, the LEGO minifigure 15 that didn't fit together properly, and we ended up super gluing together. He isn't poseable, but can hold stuff and stand around. His hands are also a bit warped. After that, we printed this adjustable LEGO figure design. This one actually poses and acts like a LEGO figure. Finally, we printed this neat black battle droid that looks similar to a firefighting battle droid. This one worked the best and was the closest to its comparable LEGO version. These figures lack quality compared to the real LEGO figures and are not as worthwhile to print as the accessories were. 
For the final challenge, we will print Lego bricks to recreate the speeder from one of our favorite Lego sets, the 2020 501st Battle Pack. We found a website called printablebricks.com, which has 3D files to print almost any Lego brick. We reviewed the speeder instructions and downloaded each brick we needed. We sorted them by color and printed them in batches of blue, light gray, dark gray, and black. Assembling it was difficult because the bricks didn't fit together perfectly, so we had to carve out some of the plastic between a few studs to make them fit better. This was due to the bricks being designed with slightly skewed dimensions. So now, after we've built the speeder, here is the final product. Can you tell the LEGO and 3D printed versions apart? How about now? Yep, they're definitely not the same from close up. The biggest difference is how the bricks have gaps between them. Another noticeable difference is the shade of blue from the filament. In the end, the speeder looks alright, but is definitely not a replacement for real LEGO. 3D printing can work for one or two pieces, but it doesn't work well for a whole set. Finally, we printed a lot of things to test out this printer, such as some airplanes, interesting mechanisms, and a koala to go with our Lego koala army. We had lots of fun learning to use the 3D printer and printing all the Lego parts. 3D printed parts aren't as good as Lego, but they are a useful alternative for making custom and unique parts. We found the accessories to be worthwhile additions to our collection, but the figures and bricks didn't work as well. Although 3D printing Lego was fun, it is better utilized in making other items. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and we'll see you next time on Sanders 3 Studios. Bye.